Hi, I'm Kylie Vernoff, and I'm here with Chris Gordon on Hellblazer Biz. Hey everyone, I have the honor and the pleasure and the privilege of Kylie Vernoff today. Well, the company Hello. of Kylie. Hi, how are you? I appreciate you joining Hi. me again. Yeah. <laughs> I appreciate you joining me and I appreciate you um, yeah, just chatting to me yeah, and taking your time yeah. to come out. My pleasure. Well, I say take your time to come out. Yeah, you're still sat at home. so <laughs> I'm right on the couch. This is my actual couch. So welcome to my living room. Mm-hmm. It's like welcome to my dining room. My... I like it. I like it. <laughs> my DVD collection behind me. I see that. <laughs> it's quite a collection. It is a Blu-ray collection. It's it's not as big as it is. It's kind of shrunk quite a lot. But, that yeah. is shrunk? Yeah, that's shrunk. Yeah. That's a pretty significant collection. It was a lot more than that. <laughs> that's what happens when you get streaming and, you know, uh, what do you call yeah. them? DVRs and stuff now. You can you can shove it all on there. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. Get rid of all the cases and yeah. make a little room. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And now you just don't, don't know where to look for films because they're everywhere. <laughs> I know. I get overwhelmed sometimes if I want to watch something and I sort of start looking on all the streaming services. And I, sometimes I'll spend 30 minutes trying to find something to watch and then I just can't be bothered. It just, it took up all my time. <laughs> I'm, to... I'm so glad I'm not the only one. <laughs> oh my gosh. It's like if, and so now I'll ask for a recommendation because literally I'll just get into some wormhole and then I have no will to watch anything. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> I sit there. I mean, you know, it's great. I mean, especially for independent. I mean, this, I talk about this all the time with independent, you know, people, independent film and stuff. Things like Netflix and Amazon Prime. They, you know, I mean, Amazon, I'm on Amazon Prime. <laughs> then my show's out there. <laughs> oh, that's fantastic. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's right. In, in the, I love Amazon Prime. It's, you know, yeah, and they're great. They're great places to go. But you're right. I have spent so many nights. Uh, my wife and I have sat there. I think it was, only, in fact, last night or the night before, we sat there for exactly that about time, 30, 40 minutes, mm -hmm. just flicking through. Do you want to watch that one? Do you want to watch? No. Mm -hmm. And then in the end, it was like, oh, just go to bed. It's time to Let's go to bed now. <laughs> yeah, it's like, yeah. It's just like you, yeah. you do you I, lose the I'm will. I'm like, now it's too late. I don't want to start anything. And I've sort of, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you just kind of lose the will, but there's just, there's just so much choice. There's yeah, it's an embarrassment of riches. It's too much. <laughs> First world problems, eh? <laughs> yeah, seriously. Yeah. Yes, yes, exactly. That's the definition of a first world problem. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, too much, too much TV, too much entertainment. I just can't choose. <laughs> <laughs> so Kylie goes. Where were your inspirations coming from? I mean, you you have got a lovely career behind you, and you you know you obviously. You've got both on screen, voice acting, you've got uh, everything there, <laughs> so to kind of put it in, a, in an easy way. So what were your inspirations to get into this kind of a career and a kind of, well, it's not of a lifestyle as well, really. It's not really a career acting, is it? It's a, it's a vocation, a life. Yeah. Yeah, it is. And I would say that um, I really never wanted to do anything else, not seriously, Mm -hmm. I sort of, um, I found the acting bug really young. Um, and I did it, I did it as a professional, as a kid. Uh, we were in Los Angeles until I was almost 10 and I did a, a decent amount of commercials and I found that it really, um, it was hard to be a kid in this business. Yeah. Um, I found it stressful. Um, and so we moved out of Los Angeles. We moved to Utah uh, when I was starting middle school. And when I was in maybe my second year there, we were in Park City. I started doing some uh, theater, some community theater, some musicals. Mm -hmm. And um, I really fell in love with the craft at that point. So I sort of understood then that there was a, the business part, which was trying to get hired. But then there was also the the creating something, and 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 the community involved. Uh, you know that's the that's the best part of what I do is that you can't do it in a vacuum, right? You, you're collaborating. Yeah. Um, and that's where I really found my people. I found my tribe. Um, it made middle school a lot easier because <laughs> I really, <laughs> yeah. I I found my you know my friends. Um, and then we moved again when I was uh, starting high school. We moved to a small town um, just outside of Albany called, it's not that small of a town, but it's called Troy, New York. Mm -hmm. um, my stepdad took a job teaching at Rensselaer Polytechnic Institute. And 
and I started doing just the high school school plays. Yeah. And um, I thought I found that I was pretty good at it. I found that I felt um, I felt comfortable and confident. And again, uh, I, I found my friends. Um, and so then, uh, when I graduated high school, I sort of when I was graduating and I was thinking about what to do for college, I. I told myself that if I got into a really good acting school, then I would give myself permission to pursue it seriously. Okay. Um, and so I applied to like my top four and, um, and I, I did, I got into, uh, the training program at Boston university. Excellent. Um, and it was excellent and I got really lucky. I signed with a fantastic agent as soon as I graduated wow. and, um, and sort of started working right away. That is fantastic. Uh, that's a big. That's yeah. a big thing to do as well. Sign straight away with an agent. You know, straight out. It was out of so agent. lucky. I, I I have friends that I went to school with that didn't have that happen right away, and that became this huge obstacle into doing what mm -hmm. they loved doing was just trying to find someone who would send them out. So I never take that for granted. I got really fortunate. The agent that I signed with when I came out of school was a strong advocate for women. So I always felt like I had someone watching my back as a young woman in the business yeah. and. Uh, and yeah, and then I, you know, I, I did a little bit of waitressing and bartending in the beginning, but then I, I started working pretty steadily. And so I've been able to sustain, like you said, a lifestyle in this business. Um, and it's been such a blessing. Yeah. I haven't had to really do anything else. <laughs> That's, that, <laughs> that is great. Which is, and very lucky as well, because the amount of I mean, I don't know, people see actors on screen or, you know, like you say, on, on Red Dead Redemption and stuff like that, so you can hear the mm -hmm. voice actors and you think that they're constantly there. And so it's, it's great to hear someone who, you, you've done that and you've been able to be constantly there, yeah. that works your way through it because there are so many are who know, you know, they, people go to Hollywood, LA, they move out there and mm -hmm. they, they are, they carry on in waitressing or waiting and mm -hmm. or any other job that they can and it's over here in London most of the people I know in the independent circuit have got full daytime jobs as well because yeah. just to keep the bills paying because it's not an yeah. easy career and like you say it's I think I think you've got to have a passion to push through it because there's so much I do this on my show the amount of rejection I get uh, it's, it's quite um it's if you if you if you if you let it get to you you you're they're the ones who I think fall by the wayside because that's right. It's in the heart, you know, and that's where you've got to push it. I mean, I know that my show's not as big as I want it to be, but it's getting there, for example. And I know the rejections come in thick and fast from some of the, I mean, I'm, look, I'm talking about the likes of James Corden I mentioned before. But yeah. I, I'm, I can be quite cheeky back. I wrote to the put nicely. He wrote, hasn't been on your show? He hasn't. It's disgraceful, isn't it, guys? We should start a campaign. This is <laughs> <Yeah>. ridiculous. <laughs> it is. It's shocking. He came over from, that, that's a story, because he came over from London and I asked. I knew it wouldn't happen. Um and he said, they, his publicist said, no, sorry. He goes, and I said, you've missed a treat, Corden and Gordon. You could have had that. I said, you know, what else? And I was, I was actually put it that way, in a nice, in a funny way. And they wrote back and just went, ha, 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 that's, that's hilarious. And I was like, yeah, <laughs> thanks. But, but the thing is, you won't give up, right? Like, you'll, yeah. you'll keep trying. And I really do. When I, when I work with younger actresses or actors um, or meet them, I really believe that not quitting is is a huge part of the equation because because if you quit then it can't happen if you decide that you're just and and I also understand that some people quit because it is not for everybody yeah uh, like you said the rejection the rejection can feel extremely personal because oh, yeah. what is being rejected right is is this. Exactly, is it? Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's me. Um, and even as a grown woman, sometimes every now and then I get rejected and it just breaks my heart. Um, most of the time it rolls off my back because it's just mm -hmm. a part of the business. But every now and then there'll be something that I think this was meant for me. I What I have to offer this project is different from what any other person has and it's the right fit and then I go in there and I slay it and I meet the director and it feels like it's meant to be and then every now and then one of those jobs doesn't go your way and it really breaks your heart and um, so being able to withstand the heartbreak uh, and ride those waves uh, is is really the only way the only way that you can assure yourself that something can happen exactly right? because mm -hmm. if you quit at the bottom you'll never get 
lifted back up. Yeah, exactly. exactly. Uh, but like I said, for some people, for some people, quitting is the right thing because it's um, because they don't have the the right um, constitution for all the rejection. You yeah, know? yeah, definitely. It's too hard on them. It is. I mean, I've learnt myself because I'm very self conscious. Well, I've, I've I've grown less so through doing what I do because. You know, I mean, it's helped in in that respect. It's helped me in that because I, you know, I loved. That's one thing I can say. Because oh, I used to do high school theatre and everything as well. I loved it. Oh, Absolutely. you did! It's was, the best, right? It is. I did so high much school freedom. It was. Yeah. It was amazing. I was in the musicals. Um, did theatre at university. Well, not I did German at university, but I was in the amateur amateur dramatic society. So I did pantomimes and you know Shakespeare mm-hmm. plays, things, whatever yes. I could get my hands yes. on. And it's amazing. And in twenty years since then until I started this up about four years, three and a half years ago, there's always something missing inside. And you're right, there's a certain, I know I'm not saying that I'm that type of person. Well, I am that type of person, just maybe not as good as someone else, but I am in my own right, good. Um, and that's not me being big headed, but <laughs> that's, you know, you have to self-believe and that's what I've been taught is, you know, I started this out doing a five minute motivational thing to people who were supporting the TV show that got cancelled. And I was like, wow. and I mean, I still think to myself every day, I can't believe anyone wants to listen to me. And now you're my 157th guest who's, you know, actress, actresses fantastic. in three years. Mm-hmm. And to me, you know, it's, it's success. That's what people define success as rich, famous, um, still things like that. But that's not really, that's great to have those things. But success is... Yeah constantly being happy with what you're doing and having if your family friends support things like that i find and if you're happy in what you do and it's it's producing results in whatever way it can be then that's success well, yeah <laughs> i mean for sure this i know for sure that happiness is an inside job yeah right and i have learned that the hard way there are things where I think if I get this job or if I, you know, that that is going to make me happy. And I have experienced it myself and I've certainly had friends who have become rich, famous, you know, this, that, Mm -hmm. and have found that they are miserable beyond repair. (laughs) And so, um, right. You, you, you have to, and, and this is interesting because when you said, is this a profession or a lifestyle? Mm -hmm. I think sometimes it's both for sure, but also keeping it as a profession, sometimes it just needs to be what I do because who I am is so much more than Mm -hmm. what I do. And I think that is for me, uh, how I have found true happiness is, uh, you know, I'm a mom and I, you know, I have a, I have a life that I love to lead. And, and part of that is being around other actors in the community and doing what I love to do, Mm -hmm. of course. But but there is something that I think having a line of having it not define who I am, yeah. uh, you know, has been really valuable for me, for me. Yeah, because I, w- I remember being told flat out that if you aren't a star by 35 as a woman, mm-hmm. that it's, o- it's over. That, you know, at this point you'll be relegated to playing very small roles. And, um, and it's interesting how I... In- I internalized that information without even realizing I had done it. <laughs> yeah. um, and yet I have worked more after 35 than I worked before it. I mean, my, and, and it's not just, it's not just certain kinds of roles. It's every kind of role. Yeah. Um, and so what if I had quit at 35 because I had been told that it would. Exactly. Be the you would have completely. The death toll. No. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You'd have missed out. You'd have missed, yeah. yeah. Exactly. I, I mean, I've heard that before. People have said that, and um, they said about me because I was thinking the same. Because I mean, I'm 40. How old am I now? I'm 44. This, you see, that's how old I, I'm, I'm going to see now. <laughs> so, you know, I can't remember. Mm-hmm. And people have said that I keep thinking that because people have told me, you know, once you doing what I do or do anything in that age, you get past a certain age and you've had it. And I turned around and I said, Samuel L. Jackson started when he was in his 50s I think Morgan Freeman was the same wasn't they he was in his 60s Is when that right 50s or 60s when they kept when they when they hit it and it's mm-hmm. like you know they've worked all that way they worked they weren't mm-hmm. they nothing they've worked up but it's like they you know they, they they're not past it Jack Nicholson crikey he's in his 70s and he's still <laughs> he, he can still yeah. I think he's retired now but he could knock him out of the park yes absolutely 
But what's missing from that list, right, are women. And so that's where that's I think true. things are, right? <laughs> yeah. And that's where I think things are changing. I think things are changing. I think we're starting to see women like Helen Mirren who get to be sexy and interesting mm -hmm. and powerful. And um, it's an exciting time to, to be a woman over 35. For sure, in this business. Oh, definitely, definitely. I mean, you've got Judy Dench up there as well, but Helen Mirren, I think, her roles that she's taken on, uh, she's such a versatile, brilliant actress. Uh, I mean, I, I wouldn't... And Meryl never... Streep. Look and at no... what Meryl Streep has done in this, you know, I don't yeah. want to say later part of her career, because I imagine she's going to keep going for decades, but, I mean, her roles get more and more interesting, and, yeah. Exactly. Yeah, yeah they it's do. It's an exciting time. It is. I mean, Helen Mirren, for one, I wouldn't have never have expected. I watched Red... And Red Two, I love those two films. They're they're, they're perfect. You know, you know, with Bruce Willis yeah. and yeah. And, yeah, and she just kicks ass. And she's like, you know, it's like I haven't seen that in so long. I didn't even realize that was her. I have to go back and watch. <laughs> yeah, that's it's a oh, really good yeah. one. But yeah, I'm a, such a huge fan. When you have her on your show, please pass along how <laughs> inspiring she has been to me that's personally. If I, that's if I could speak if she was on my show. Because I'm just like, yeah, no saying. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Same. I'll be standing right there next to your bookcase, just like this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, peering in, yeah. <laughs> it's mm -hmm. quite. Yeah, it'd be good to have some. Yeah, she's she is fantastic, and uh, I think what you said there as well. It's not just women over thirty-five. I think something's changing in the film industry, which we've seen, and I've I've had the pleasure, and I've got the pleasure of, of being friends with many women in, uh, in film producers and stuff in the independent world and the mm -hmm. you know the mainstream. And mm -hmm. there's so much more strong female characters coming out. Yeah. I think, if I remember rightly, a few years ago, they didn't want to make a game with a female... Oh, no, was it Rogue One, in fact, what we were just speaking about before? Oh, yeah. I remember them talking, and people were saying it's going to flop because you can't have a female lead in a Star Wars movie. And it was the same for Force Awakens with Rey and stuff. Mm -hmm. You can't have a female lead, and it's like, really? Those, you know, obviously the Star Wars films anyway, so they're going to go big, but... They've got millions of people, including me, who absolutely adore them and think, what's, yeah. what amazing characters. And in games, you've got your character, you've got, you've got Lara Croft, really strong female characters just stomping through. And it's he, incredible. It I mean, with, with Red Dead, I, I mean, I, I am blown away by the women in that game, in our game. It is, I mean, just all of them are these incredible actresses and they are fully fleshed out characters with mm -hmm. backstories and they are invaluable in the in the camp and in the missions and you know I've said this before but I never played video games before I was in one yeah um so this is a, a whole new world to me but I from what I understand you don't have a lot of uh middle-aged female badasses <laughs> in the video game world right True. so uh Getting to play Susan and getting to really, you know, be out there and know my way around a rifle and, you know, yeah. take care of my girls and not take care of my girls. Uh, you know, it's it's amazing what Rockstar have done with the with the women in this game in particular. Definitely, definitely, and it's 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 a it's a cracking to see. And the thing is as well because you see young boys playing the female, wanting to play the female characters as well, and. You know, I mean, you know, and yeah. my son plays Fortnite and stuff like that, and he's, you know, and he, he plays it. And I remember because when I was a, when I was younger, and uh, video games just started out on the old on the old spectrum. Yeah. <laughs> no, yes, no. When, yes. when the place, mm, I, I think you know, we're similar here. <laughs> yeah, mm -hmm. you know, the, <laughs> the first Playstations came out. Uh, there was a stigma, um, and like you know, boys wouldn't want to play with female characters. But that's changed so much because yeah. because of that versatility that attitude of you know women aren't just like in mary poppins they're not just like you're supposed to be there you know pretty little things in the background they're not right women should be right. leading well, from the front and they have been for years anyway in, in industry so why yeah. couldn't that be shown in 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 the entertainment industry and i think that's a huge right. leap forward right and not have them be uh sexually objectified and not have them be just sort of in the you know side stories in the margins um, yeah yeah, I think things are really shifting, and I have I have a daughter. I don't know how old your son is, but my daughter is thirteen, mm -hmm. and um, he's twelve. Mine, <laughs> I, right? So right there, and yeah. so seeing these Star Wars films, and seeing you know, seeing these these yeah, seeing these incredible female heroes. Yeah. Um, I I didn't really have that. I mean, we had Wonder Woman, 
stuff like that. But this is, um, it's a whole different animal. And I think you're right. It's, it's, it's a, it's past time, but it's a, it's a, it's an exciting thing to be on the, the cusp of. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah. I mean, it's something that's been outstanding for a while. I mean, I said it, I think the way I put it in another in chat I had last week, I think was a, you know, I've worked in IT industry for 20 years. When I did my acting, I was going to do Lambda. I was going to take an act, uh, the oh, exam yeah. for Lambda. I was asked an examiner who was to give me private tuition. She said, you should take the exam because you'll get through. But at the time, it was a bit... Parents, obviously, headmistress and minister, loved them to bits. And I'd never change anything, they said. But they just steered me in a different direction, I'll say that. And okay. So, so I didn't <laughs> okay. take the exam. So I went into, into, into languages and IT. I won't knock that either, but in this industry, I, I put it back, I wouldn't care, I don't care, and I've worked, I've had late women who are bosses, I've had people of colour who are my managers, and, 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 and peers, and it doesn't, it's something, I've never even acknowledged, if you know what I mean, that my boss would be female. To me, people are people. Mm, okay. And I think that's what, that's what I'm, I'm trying to get at is that the entertainment industry is starting to come around to that as well. Yeah. And the fact that there are roles out there and they're creating roles now rather than creating roles and saying, right, it's got to be a white man, six foot tall, blonde hair, blue eyes. Yep. Like Doctor Who, for example. Now they've gone out and they've got, and I can't remember her name. Oh no, how embarrassing. <laughs> I can't even save you because I haven't watched it. <laughs> but the, I do know who you mean. Yeah, Jodie uh, Whittaker. Jodie Whittaker. You know they've got Jo. She's now a female doctor, and the people are still there's still some archaic people who are saying you can't have a woman, you know, a female doctor. And Star Trek in the set, I cracked up because I had someone from Star Trek Discovery on, and people criticising that there was a Chinese female captain. Uh, and I was like, right, you're on the bridge of the Enterprise. You've got a Klingon, a Vulcan. You've got people from all the other areas of this universe, right? And that's and, what you're picking and, at. And you're oh, picking okay. at the fact that you've got a woman who's a captain. Really? <laughs> I got retweeted by a few of the cast for that because I was just, uh, because that's why I can't see how people can get themselves hung up on that. And, yeah. and I think the, more, the yeah. more we see it in the industry, the more of it comes across on screen, the more it's going to be people, that, that little minority, which is already a minority, is just getting smaller, smaller, weaker and weaker. Yeah, you know, I had the incredible privilege of working on the this uh, the finale of House of Cards, mm -hmm. and so I was there when you know uh, with Robin Wright when she took over as the number one on the show. Yeah, and I don't want to give any spoilers for people who are behind, but she has risen to some great power, and she was also directing that episode that I got mm -hmm. to work with her on, wow. and it was really this incredible. Uh, opportunity to to watch her mm -hmm. not just her character in this position of power but also to be directing the episode and I realized how few female directors I've actually worked with um and how um I, I don't know how important I think it is that we have more females at the helm mm -hmm. because you know she was absolutely in control I mean that woman holds a lot of power in person too. Absolutely <laughs> uh, generous and brilliant and holds her power differently. But I realized at, that I've been in this business a long time. And I think that in film and TV, I've worked twice with female directors. And so that's an area wow. where we have a long way to go. Mm -hmm. um, and you, I think how much, um, how much we're talking about it now in the time's up movement and how yeah. much, you know, people are saying for, um, for producers to make sure that they're hiring female directors to make sure that we are having more women's voices, uh, you know, in film and TV in general. So I'm hoping that those things are changing because I, I really, um, even, I think even I hadn't noticed how, when I normally would work with a director, I just would sort of anticipate that he'd be male. Yeah. 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 You're right. right. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's, it's, they're yeah, just, that's again, it's that thing you get used to. Um, yeah. But it's, I mean, I know from the British independent, there's quite a few female directors. I mean, they're, they're doing their own mm -hmm. films, so they're directing, they're acting in it and stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's Nadia Jordan, Katrina Gray, they've all been on, they're, they're lovely yes. people. But they're, they're, this is the new generation of people who are pushing yes. up and they're coming up now ba because they've seen their dreams. They've seen people like yourself and Helen Mirren and Judy Dench pushing that barrier and pushing that bar further and further. So now yeah. we've got, like, there's a whole generation of young female, young women who are coming up and thinking yeah i can do that i've you know i'm not I've, there's nothing stopping me and yes and pushing past all that stigma and everything in there um so yeah we will see i think we'll see a lot more of that 
if, uh, women in film is the hashtag I think I use quite a lot because I, I, I'm passionate about yeah. that too. I think it's as a, such a, you know, they've got as much of a unique eye, in fact, sometimes a lot better on certain, in certain aspects of what they're looking at of how they can actually get things portrayed. It's just Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. I, and I think, uh, I mean, we've got a long way to go, but I think mm -hmm. that people are, you know, ready and asking for it. Definitely, definitely. At yeah. least you and I. You and I yeah, are we so are, ready. Yeah. <laughs> we, we are so ready. I know, we're all fired up here. You know? <laughs> yeah, me too. Exactly. Yeah, I'm, they... glad we're, I'm really glad we're talking about this, actually. Well, no, it's, it, thank you. It's an important thing, um, you know, to... to clicked on something on my Skype, sorry, I don't know what it was. <laughs> but I think it is a really important thing, though, and it's something, it, I've, I've got it, because the people I talk to, it's a passion that pushes through, so, you know, it's, yeah. it's something that seems to be a recurring theme with when I talk, is to try and push, it's an agenda to push, because it should be pushed, because the Hollywood has been behind the times so much in so many different areas, it's still got a long way to go. But, yeah. I mean, and, but you see other things like Black Panther, I mean, if you're looking at the, you know, uh, colour people, I, Trying to, I'm, I'm trying to, you know, um, to go out like Black Panther a film. Again, people yeah. a few years ago would never have got made. It would never have even been looked at. But that film yeah. entirely of African American, black, black English people, of Africans, and um, and it was just the most phenomenal film. To me, it's my favorite superhero movie of all time. Just on its face just I mean it was just so exciting and so beautiful and yeah yeah it was it was yeah brilliant I mean every, the acting, brilliant I mean Forrest Whitaker is always one of my all-time favorites as well you know well, and Michael B. Jordan I mean all of them yeah all yeah you them. can't knock any of just them just like <laughs> yeah exactly the cast from top to bottom was outstanding it was it was so yeah it's, it's one of those things that you know it's, it's nice to see it's a good push it's a start especially in that area that's a very good start to do and show people, yeah. look, you know, he goes, you don't have to have them all. We've got Idris Elba, hopefully, maybe being named as the next Bond, I believe, or, or in the lineup, people keep rumouring as, I mean, that would, I'm mean, the character. I can't believe that hasn't happened yet. I mean, Idris Elba is, he's, he's my Bond. <laughs> <laughs> he is great. I mean, I know the character in the book is written as a, you know, so, but you can still change things, you know, literature changes they were written 40 years ago. So. Yes. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Yes. Change. Yeah. <laughs> change. That's what we need. Change. Positive. Yes. Shake it up. <laughs> yeah. <Just> shake it up. <laughs> Excellent. So, um, I think I've only actually asked you one question that I had written down here. <laughs> this is this is where <laughs> moving my show, on. Moving on. <laughs> this is where my this is how I love my show goes. This is what people I think it's, I love having the conversations with people like yourself, and that's what I think yeah. it's great to um, to bring this out and. And, and throw these ideas and throw this sort of topic out there because this is what people want to see. This is what people need to see. And, yeah, and, and hear your ideas and stuff. So it's great. You know, we need, we need more of it. So talking about the... Since we moved on from Black Panther and you said that was your favourite Marvel film, I'm going to ask you, what's yes. your best film of all time that you've seen? Oh, gosh. You know, that is a really tricky question for me. Um, gosh, I, I have a few. I, you know, I'll tell you what's jumping to mind, which is the first film that really made me think um, that films have a real power to make me feel something. There, um, Gallipoli mm -hmm. was a, was a, I, I sort of, that was my favorite film for a long time in my, in my very young life when I, yeah. when I came across that film. It really meant something to me. Mm -hmm. um, and I can still remember what it felt like, even as I watched it multiple times, as he, as the whistle was blowing and he goes over, I don't know if you've seen it, but. A long time ago. Uh, <laughs> right. And it, yeah. So that was my favorite film for a long time. And then, um, oh, I, I have a lot of them. Boys in the Hood is one of my favorite films. Um, I don't know if I have a favorite film. Yeah. That's like me. Uh, Picnic That's... at Hanging Rock was another film that uh, that captured my young imagination uh, as an actor, and yeah. I've not heard of that one. How about you? What's your favorite film? Now I was going to say I was about to agree with you and say I haven't got a favorite either. I've got a multitude of favorites because it depends on the genre for me. Um, Same. Because you know, I mean, I'm Star Wars. I was Star Wars born and bred, but I enjoy Star Trek as well. Much to the probably demonized myself amongst all the, the people who hate the Star Trek and Star Wars fans, but I love both. <laughs> Um, yeah, but yeah, what else? I love a good action war film, and and for emotive, I know this sounds really strange, but I'm, if I watch a war film, something like uh, Saving Private Ryan or something, the very beginning part, mm -hmm. I, I'm, 
quite an empath. And I, but for some reason, I feel empathetic with soldiers. I don't know whether it's a past life or something, but I know my, my granddad was in World War II. I've got friends mm-hmm. who were in the Vietnam War who I've tried to, I used to do reenacting. So I kind of feel close in that sort of respect. Um, so when I see stuff like that, I get really empathetic when I see soldiers dying on screen. It's, it, and, yeah. and especially things, We Were Soldiers is one of my most favourites because that portrays yes. the home life as well. And that's the first time I think I've seen a film in a horrific war situation where they actually show... It's not just these guys out here, it's the wives back home are the ones who are getting these little envelopes and taxi coming to their door. You know what I'll tell you something <coughs> interesting about that was that I thought I watched Wonder Woman when it came out with my with my daughter, who I think was twelve at the time. Oh yeah. And um it was a superhero movie with this wonderful uh woman, Gal G- G- is it Gadot or Godot? How, I call how do you her say Gal- the I call her Gal Gadot Gadot, I'll Gadot, call it. Yeah. Gadot. Probably spelling anyway, it wrong, but yeah, Gadot. Yeah. Um, so I took my daughter and I had heard it was wonderful and we were so excited. What she was not expecting, what I was not expecting were the real war scenes that were happening mm. where you saw the the men in the trenches and you saw the you know people in the villages that were starving and I I think there is something about war. You know it was it was tough on my daughter um and I don't know that I would have brought her had I known. Yeah. But I think there is something important because 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 war is so brutal. Mm-hmm. And um, I think, you know, in in our history, in uh, the history of film, sometimes war would be so glorified um, yeah. that seeing like what you're talking about, that soldiers who are there for nothing but duty, uh, for the most part, uh, putting themselves in these situations that would be really hard for anybody to imagine unless they were there. So, yeah, I hear what you're saying. And I was really glad that Wonder Woman did that, that they showed the ugliness of war. Yeah, uh, in this superhero movie. Mm-hmm. Definitely. I mean, it, well, it was a very good film in that respect as well. Oh, losing my voice, sorry. <laughs> but um, it's not just what I, mean, I can't think of any films now specifically off the top of my head. But um, I mean, uh, back to what Das Boot is a new series. I mean, that's a, probably one of my favourites. It's a German film because I also like thinking, looking. Things What's it from, called? Das Boot, the boat. Oh, I love that film. Mm-hmm. Yes, Das Boot. Yes. Yeah, oh, I yes. Because I mean, I speak I, German. I, think I might have been in middle school or high school or yeah. something like that when it came out. I really, I remember my stepfather took me to see it, and it was brilliant. Oh, I love that movie. I'm so glad you brought that up. I'm going to take a list of films that I have to go back <laughs> and watch. Red. <laughs> yeah. Das Boot. Yeah. What you should be Gallipoli for Gallipoli. you. Yeah, Gallipoli. You see Gallipoli? I have a long time ago. It's a very, very yeah. good film. So I need to watch it. It's a very emotive film as well. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, yes. <laughs> definitely, mm-hmm. definitely. So, but what you have to watch for Das Boot is they've re- they've I won't say they've remade it. They've made a new series, uh, an eight-part series. It's, I've been watching it now, and again, it's just brought it all back. It kind of followed. Who made it? The the BBC? No, no, it's a German company. Oh, German. Okay. Yeah, so yeah. it's in German with subtitles and stuff. But um, okay, it's I think it's set just after the end of the film. So you know, in the film, where the the U boat sinks at the end, and yes. the captain just. That really yes. dramatic scene where he just, yes. as a, as it sinks, he he just dies as that it, which is you know it's goosebumps up me now because that was just such a. I know thing. I'm <laughs> getting a little choked up. <laughs> but the film, the, the the series carries on from there, and it's kind of more involved. There's more home life going on, and um, excuse me, more home life things going on, and as well as the submarines and. I've been in a U-boat. There used to be one in Birkenhead. So I'm pointing over that way, as if you really know what's over yeah, there. I was like... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, in U, in near where I live in Liverpool, they used to have it. They'd raised a U-boat from the seabed, and it was all rusted over. No one oh, perished wow. in it. It was the one yeah, they, they okay. just. And they used to have tours in there before they cut it all up now and painted it and had the sections. But before they did that, they had the, it was just one solid piece. And we used to go, we opened tours down there and you were literally like that. You cramped down. I wasn't this big. And even so, you still cramped down there. But they found the the ceiling tiles were still um, intact because there'd been air pockets. So it was exactly how it had been. It had been underwater for 60 years, but there were still parts of it, parquet flooring or parquet ceiling. And it was like the cramped conditions. I was just, it fascinated me. And I was just thinking, yeah. and when you watched us bolt and, you can see them, and obviously the depth charges and the fear of those. I, who cares that they were German? I mean, you know, yesterday's enemies are today's friends. That's how it looked, you know. And they were doing their job like our guys were doing theirs. But the fear that they must have had, just sitting, you know, 100 metres below, just listening to the, oh, chills. 
but the series is very good. So yeah. Just go okay, <laughs> good. Oh, I will check it out. I will absolutely check it out. It's got, I can find it <laughs> yeah. Tom Vlashi is in it. The guy who's the um the all seeing guy in Game of Thrones. The man with no name. I haven't watched games. No! I know. <laughs> over, I know. Over. Don't throw me on my throne up. Yeah, yeah. Fine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's it. That's it terminated. No, no. Uh, it took me four or five times to get into Game of Thrones, in fairness. I kept turning it off and thinking it was the worst show ever because I thought it was dull. Uh, and then I, I binge watched it. And I, I have to stopped. watch it. And uh, Peter Dinklage and I were friends, you know, when we both started out in the oh, business uh, <laughs> and we were all in sort of the same group. I mean, I'm. I have to watch it. I just haven't. I, I think I think of it as such a big commitment. And then yeah. someone told me it was extraordinarily violent, so my, it wouldn't oh, yeah, be good yes. for my daughter. And so it no, would be no. something I need to find time to really take on when she's not home. So Yeah, yeah. She um, needs to be a bit older to watch that from all the choppings and the, uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. A bit. A little bit. Yeah. Um, so, yes. So I haven't seen it. But anyway, yeah, there's but a guy from there that's in Dust Boots. I got it. I'm going to watch it. Dust Boots. <laughs> Dust Boots. Dust, Sorry, Dust that's Boat. my German. It's those guys. Dust Boots. <laughs> okay. yeah. yeah. Peter Dinklage, one of my favorite actors as well. He's amazing. He's, He's incredible. So funny. He's incredible. Yeah. Such a funny guy. And again, someone who's come over all... I mean, I'll say it's an adversity. You know, it's not because... You know, he's, he's look what he's done with himself. You know, you get people who have don't have a passion and push through, and he's come through, and he's 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 breaking Hollywood box office, uh, you know, and yeah, taking away stigma of every kind of of, of um, you know what I'm trying to say. I'm trying, <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to say without sounding someone going to snip it for this possibly without you know on my on my thing and say Chris Gordon just said this. No, no. <laughs> you know, obviously... No, I know what you're saying. Yeah. But, I mean, and if you speak to Peter for five minutes, even as we were, you know, in our twenties, he, you know, he always knew what he was going to do. He's a fantastic actor, and uh, he 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 had a lot more confidence than a lot of us. And um, he's just a terrific guy. You know, he's <laughs> yeah. he's who you think he is. That's, that's that's lovely to know. He is actually my favourite character in Game of Thrones all the way through. I thought. Okay, fine. I'm going to watch it. Yeah, Tyrion Lannister. Watch it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, watch it. Watch it. Watch it. <laughs> he's he's brilliant in it. <laughs> I, I will. I'm going to. Cool. What's been your most difficult role to play? And you've got a nice, very, very variation of roles that you've had. What's the most difficult? What's been the most difficult role for me to play? I swear, literally nothing is jumping to mind. Okay. I mean, I guess, well, I guess what is jumping to mind is um, I did a, I did a soap opera for about a year mm -hmm. uh, when I, when I, it was when I came out of school. And I, I guess I would say that it was my most difficult because I was really just learning how to be in front of a camera and I was learning um, how to act for television. Yeah. Um, and I wanted to do a, a good job so desperately. So I always sort of always working really hard to, mm -hmm. to, to make sure that even though I was on a soap opera that I was doing great work and that I was take, cause I was a classically trained actress. And, yeah. um, so I would say that's what jumps to mind as the most difficult role. Um, but I don't know that I would say, I mean, I've, you know, I've had jobs, you know, where I've come off and like commercials or whatever, where I've said, oh, that was a rough day on set. Mm -hmm. But but in terms of a role that I'm playing, I nothing really jumps to mind except except maybe when I was just starting out. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Was that the high life? Oh, that was a great job. Was Did that, you yeah. see it? No, I haven't. I haven't seen it. I was just, this is one of the things I was just, I was wondering if that was your, your soap because I know you were in quite a few open. Episodes yeah, that. the High Life was this um, fantastic series that was on HBO, and it took place in the um, uh, in the fifties. And mm -hmm. it was this, you know, just this sort of great kind of family sitcom in black and white, and it was a uh, sort of a physical comedy with these 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 terrific uh, actors. Bob Joy was one of them, and um, Betsy Adam, and it it kind of felt like a nineteen fifties sitcom. And I played this uh, tough talking barkeep named Flannery mm -hmm. and I think that I was like drinking whiskey and smoking <laughs> cigars a lot of the time and the clothes were fantastic and that was like um right after the soap opera that was actually the job that sort of took me to the next level um, yeah. but I always tell this story because 
I was on the soap and then I went and I did this series and um, I was only supposed to do one episode of the high life and then they wrote me into the rest of the season mm -hmm. and it was just so much fun and I loved it so much and um, and then because it was HBO it was a sort of shorter season there was a long time in between when we were going to be starting the next season and um, <laughs> and so by the time I found out like on, it was a New Year's Eve when one of the actors told me that we had not been picked up. Right. I had run out of money. Oh, <laughs> I had run out of money because I thought that I was a TV star now. So, yeah. um, and so I had to go back to working in a restaurant and it was really hard. It was, I always, I got this, this job at, um, at an Irish pub mm -hmm. and they gave me a brunch shift, which is like the worst, you know, waitressing shift in the beginning. And I had to wear like a polo shirt and khaki pants and an apron. And, and, um, <laughs> literally this is true mm -hmm. on my first shift on my first day, a woman asked me for an omelet and my autograph. Okay. Um, <laughs> because she was a big fan of the soap opera. Wow. And that was sort of my worst nightmare. I thought, oh gosh, what if people recognize me from TV and then yeah. see me working in this pub? And, I, and it happened on the first day. And you know what? She was really excited to meet me. <laughs> and more importantly, on that day, I remember I brought home like $30. It was like a tough day. Yeah. I took home $30. And um, I still had roommates at that time. And that was my share of the electric bill. Right. And I remember thinking there is no shame in doing a day's work and paying your way. Mm -hmm. um, and then I worked at that restaurant for a little while and that was my last restaurant job. That was the last <laughs> one I had to work, you know. Um, but I got that lesson. I got that lesson of humility and being willing to, to, to work. Um, that, uh, you know, that there was no shame in it. Exactly, exactly. And every role is important, no matter what you do out there. This, you know, if you're out there, you're bringing home some money. You guys, every every single person is required in the every industry that you're in. Um, so it's, there is no shame in that. And like you say, it's the humility of going out there and realizing, like you say, yeah. you've, you've you spent all your money because you're a big TV star, and realizing actually, no, there's more work. You know, you've got, <laughs> there's work involved to try and yeah. keep that. Going. I have skills, and and I can work, and um, I'm still great friends with the people that I met working at that restaurant. Yeah. And, and um, you know, yeah. It was not a humiliation. It was the opposite of that. It was a great thing. Exactly. Good. Excellent. Excellent. Yeah. So what's the... But that would have been a great show if we'd gotten picked up. <laughs> that show could have gone places. Thank you for asking about it. No, no. I was, just <laughs> that. I was thinking that sounds really interesting. So, yeah. Yeah. That's, what, that's, a sad, that's a sad thing as well. A lot of shows don't get picked up. Or they, I mean, this is the reason my show exists is because the, it was based on Matt Ryan and John Constantine and that had 13 episodes and they decided to cancel it even though it was probably one of the best um, mystical DC shows out there, and it's coming, doing a comeback now on uh, Legends of Tomorrow, uh, but th that's the whole point. There's so many shows out there that just have so much hard work and hard effort from everybody involved, and the network can just decide, now. I'll, 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 I'll put a reality TV show on instead, and that's my bugbear. I'm not going to go there, don't worry, because I'll be there all yeah. night. <laughs> <laughs> put, yeah, I'm not even going to say a word, except that, yes, like... Uh, Two seasons ago, I did a, a network pilot, and it was brilliant, and they had terrific actors at the helm, and a ter terrific creator, and uh, I was so proud of it, and it was, you know, for me, it was shooting here in New York, mm -hmm. and um, oh, it was just such a terrific cast, and the whole creative team was so interesting, and when it didn't get a pickup, I thought, oh, what do you have to do? What, uh, <laughs> yeah. you know, what, what do you have to do to, you know, to make it? Because it's very fickle, isn't it? It is. And so, yeah, that's very, very, because, I mean, some of the stuff that goes out there and you just look at it and you think, why? Um, whereas I've seen pilots, some people pilots that have gone out and, you know, you do get the pilot and then that's it. And it's gone mm -hmm. because you, and, and it's gone again. And you're like, oh, that would have been a perfectly, yeah. perfectly big show. Um, yeah. There's just so many gone by the wayside which should have gone out there. But I think there's been a trend, like I say, of reality, um, which is just, Pointless in my view. In my eyes. No, we're not talking about it. We're not talking about it. <laughs> yeah, I shouldn't really say that because I've just had a publicist send me someone who's in a reality show. <laughs> that's not my problem. <laughs> yeah, that's no, all you. <laughs> yeah, that's me. <laughs> um, but yeah, that, I, I, it's only because the, I see the talent out there, and this, you know, I mean, that's why I think yeah. Netflix, like we mentioned before, things like that are great outlets for for being able to showcase more and more talent and more 
things get picked up. I think it's a um, this might be too much stuff sometimes, like you said, when we had, the, you know, we were saying spent half an hour yeah, looking for stuff. Yeah, it But a lot of times, too, with the streaming services, they'll order a whole season so yeah. that you'll at least, you know, if you're, if you get attached to a show, you'll know that you, you'll get to at least make a whole season. Exactly. As opposed to a pilot where you make the pilot and then you, then you wait for the upfronts to find out if you're pilot, if you're, if you're going to be on a show or not on a show. Um, yeah. So, yeah, the streaming services, I think typically, at least in my experiences, will sign on at least for a whole season. Yeah, they usually do, which is great. Mm-hmm. Because, like you say, you know, and then you get that, you get a full season. If it doesn't go on after that season, okay, it's disheartening, yeah. but at least you've yeah, had the full but season. You get to know that you can build something. There's not as much pressure to put it all, all your, of your ideas into yeah. the first episode, you know? Exactly, exactly. You know, you can stretch it out and you can bring people in and draw people right in. And there's, oh, there's some brilliant stuff out there. Take your time and, yeah. <laughs> there really is. Uh, before I move on to questions from people who've been sending them in, I'll ask you what was yeah. a role that you haven't played or you've been asked to play? But what you, what would, what's a role that you have not played yet that you would really love to play? Um, I don't know if it's a role, but I can tell you that I really, really miss doing Shakespeare. Okay. I, when, and that is why women like Helen Mirren are so inspiring because I never want to retire. Like I really, I, I want to play all the Queens that I thought that I'd be playing. I think that, um, this ride that I'm on with film and TV and uh, it's, uh, when I came out of school, I thought I'd be touring the country doing Shakespeare. Mm-hmm. That's sort of what I thought that I would do. And meanwhile, I really, I haven't done any in years. And so that, that, that for me is, uh, it, it feels like I'm, I'm missing something, uh, some part of me, like I'm missing mm-hmm. a limb that I'm not <laughs> walking the boards yeah. and speaking the bard. I really miss it. Okay. That's interesting. Um, it's a, it's a great, I mean, you, you playwright is where, one of the most famous and well-known ones. I was actually, when I went in London last year, I did make myself to go to the Globe. I didn't go in, I couldn't oh, go in. Yeah. I've got my little selfie next to the Globe. Here. <laughs> yeah, you just saw the building itself. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't say I went in there. I used to go to plays a lot. And um, you know, I, I, I just, there's something about a certain, I mean, I tried to get to see Ian McKellen as King Lear, I think it was at the last time. There's no chance I would ever get a ticket for that. But, but I, you know, there's just so many, that's another place you go. You go and see, go to the stage, go to the theatre and you will see, actors who like you, you know like you, like you said they're just the passion they're out there because they are f- superb actors for, because they've got to know everything that's going on around them unlike a tv film or a film or tv or even a game in that respect where you can do retakes and things like that the theater it's it's you're one with the audience um and when you get it wrong with the audience <laughs> the audience don't, you know so it, it's this. They can feel it. They yeah. can feel it. You're, yeah. yeah. Yes. Yes. Because symbiotic uh, relationship. Yeah. People ask me sometimes how, you know, what, what, how, what's good acting or, uh, you know, what's an advice for an actor? And I say, you want to, you want to walk like people walk and you want to talk like people talk and you want to breathe like people breathe. Mm-hmm. And in the theater, you really have an opportunity to walk and talk and breathe because it's a live thing that's happening. Yeah. Um, I don't like when too much time passes in between when I've done a play anyway. Mm-hmm. But yeah, Shakespeare in the Park is bucket list for me. Oh, that'd That's be awesome. Bucket list for me. <laughs> that would be awesome to see. Mm-hmm. Excellent, excellent. I'll invite you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> You'll have to come to New York and it won't be snowing because it'll be summer. So. Oh, yeah, that'll be, that'll be a bonus because it was cold. <laughs> Very cold. Yeah. <laughs> Although it gave me it gave me the authentic New York look because walking around the streets that time and you saw the you know the steam coming out the drains. So when oh, you when you live when you you know you live in work living on films and growing up on films and and you see the New York stuff always on TV and just being able to be there seeing the steam it's like I'm in New York. It's, like, it's real. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, I know exactly what you mean. I can picture it. Yeah. 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 It, it was good. That is the real New York. It is, yeah, but it'd be good to come in the summer too. Yeah, come in the summer. It's <laughs> nice. We'll try. We're trying. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Can you. We can, yeah. So unfortunately, as you know, with your 13-year-old daughter, now we've got a 12-year-old son. He's classed as an adult. So prices oh, yeah. just go... <laughs> yeah, it, it is. You have to really make a consideration when you're traveling. It's not as... That's one thing about family life is that you can't just hop on a plane and go somewhere. you got to exactly. consider everything. It is. Make a commitment. It is. Yeah. Well, we were actually looking at New York last week, actually, and I think four nights stay some... I think it was a... I stayed at the Pennsylvania opposite Madison Square Garden. 
Uh-huh. And I think I looked there this time, and I think four nights was the same as 14 nights, would you believe, in price. I think there was about maybe a five, six, £500 difference, a bit more to say four, but I was like four nights compared to 14, and it's only like £500, which is what, $700? Like, uh-huh. Yeah. That's what, well, yeah. You might, you, might, you might end up seeing this great crashing. <laughs> yeah, that's interesting. Oh, wow. Yeah, I don't know how they price those things. No. I can never make sense of it. <laughs> no. <laughs> cool. So I've got, I've got a couple of questions which we sent in. Kylie. Okay, um, good. So this is, the first one is from Shannon. T- oh, good. You've, you've had enough of mine. <laughs> Wait, what? I said, she said, oh, good. I said, like, yeah, you've had enough of mine. <laughs> no, I love questions, bro. Okay. I'm ready. So Bring it. At Shenantix, I'm going to go by Twitter handles. At Shenantix17, were you told where the story was going to go even after you departed? In... Oh, with Red Dead? Yeah, with Red Dead. Sorry, these are all Red oh. Dead related. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, uh, not at all. I had no idea. As a matter of fact, um, um, there are things that happen in the game when I'm playing Mm -hmm. that I, I didn't know happened. Um, sometimes the cast would tell each other, or I might know someone's general fate, but if I wasn't on set when it happened, I might not know exactly how it happens. Okay. So I think one of the brilliant things that Rockstar does is they protect their information so that the player finds the story out in real time. Mm -hmm. Um, and so I, I, I got that benefit too. Obviously I know everything that happens with Susan and when Susan was on set, but, um, no, I didn't know. I didn't know, uh, some of what happens in the story and some (laughs) of it I still don't know actually, because I've not finished playing. Fantastic. Fantastic. Yeah. I was going to say, don't spoil it because I don't think I've got that far yet. We've only got the game recently. <laughs> Have you been playing at all? No, my son's been playing. I haven't had a chance yet. So he's been the one playing it. He's, he's, he's a pro on the. I do get a t- I'm a gamer, but I just haven't. I've, I focus on one at a time. So I'm trying to complete one at the yeah. moment before I move on to the next one. <laughs> well, you, one of the things you can do is you can hang around camp and antagonize the camp members. Like there'll be a button that says greet or one that says antagonize. So you should antagonize Susan a little bit. It's pretty fun. <laughs> Excellent. I think my friend Chris Martin at work, he, he said he does that because he said he hangs around in the camp because when I mentioned I was talking to you, he was like, ah. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's really fun. My, that's what my daughter likes to do, hang around camp and antagonize me. Because <laughs> she knows what will happen in real life. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> cool. At Alt Hendo, is, were you in the same room with the other actors and actresses in the motion capture? Because obviously, mo- mo- most studios they do one one at a time, including cutscenes. So be- yeah, this is even when you were saying voice actor earlier. Um, Red Dead Redemption Two was not shot uh, as um, in a. In a we, we weren't in a voiceover booth. Yeah. we shot it on a soundstage all together, just like you would shoot a film. Okay. And a lot of people don't know that. Uh, especially because I was on this game for four and a half years. Mm-hmm. Um, so um, we, we really got to become a company, yeah. honestly. Be- and, and it's, and it's the, cl- it's, it's almost like theater acting in that you have all this freedom of movement because mm-hmm. the cameras surround you. But at the same time, there is a camera close up on your face. So it's also like film acting, but yeah, mm-hmm. we were all out there really doing these scenes as you would a film. Um, and, and I think we got really close. This cast really bonded. Yeah. Um, I was out with uh, three of my cast members last night. Oh, um, mm-hmm. And um, we really bonded over, over all these years. And I think that you can feel that when you're playing the game. You can feel the real relationships that have developed over that time. Yeah. So, yeah, we were all together. Yeah. That's fantastic. Um, yeah, and it's, it's, I think you're right. It's voiceover. So it has moved on. I, I keep saying voiceover, but it's not because motion capture. I mean, I've, I, look at this, you know, Red Dead Redemption, Assassin's yeah. Creed, everything now. It's all full motion capture. So it's not just voice acting. And you know, because... they actually, it's a different term, Chris. They call it performance capture because I think initially when they would make these games, they would have the voiceover booth. So someone who would voice a character mm-hmm. and then they would have the motion capture who were generally like stunt people. Yeah. And uh, now they put and, it together. And now they call it performance capture because they are capturing the full the full performance on yeah. the soundstage. Excellent. Thank you. I've just learned yeah. that. Thank you. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yeah. I've learned Me something too. new. <laughs> cool. uh, it's Parappa Fan 14. 
uh, Parappa. Oh yeah, that's a, that's a good game. I, I used to work at PlayStation last year for six months and I've got friends who worked on Parappa, uh, the rapper. <laughs> Uh, my name's actually on Horizon Zero Dawn as well. Not that I did anything, but it's in the, <laughs> it's in the, it's in the credits. <laughs> oh, that's very cool. Somewhere. Um, but yeah, uh, their character, so Parappa 14, sorry, I'll just digress. Did your character change through development? And if so, when and why? Did you change, did you change which of these went? Or <laughs> Yeah, she, she definitely did. I, I think, so first of all, like I said, um, they... There's not a lot of information that comes. I didn't even know um, that I was doing a Western mm -hmm. when I did my audition. I had, uh, you know, they because they protect their information, they have you do an audition that sort of hints at the role that you would be playing without giving it away, right? Mm -hmm. They didn't want people to know they were making a new Red Dead. So, um, so when I first played Susan... I didn't know who she was. I mean, I had an idea. What you know, once I got there and got on set, I had an idea vaguely that it was Western and that maybe I should do a Southern accent. But mm -hmm. it was. Um, but um, there are some things that are done in a voiceover booth. So, um, especially towards the end of my tenure on the game, when we were winding down, you'll go in and you'll do some pickup lines, um, like for example, a uh, Susan plays poker. Uh, I I did some of her poker language mm -hmm. in a voiceover booth or sometimes on that day the sound wouldn't have been clean we might have missed something I just have to say it cleanly so you do some things in a voiceover booth and they had me do a couple of things in the voiceover booth that were what they called fixing the performance okay and my experience I can't speak for my colleagues but my experience was that they were things that I did early on before I really knew who Susan right. was okay. yeah. so the performance didn't quite match yeah. who we now know that she is. I didn't have I didn't have her her swagger down. I didn't have her particular vulnerabilities down. Mm -hmm. Um and so that was really exciting. I'd go back and say, oh my gosh, like that was my first take on the character, but how look how she has changed and uh I, she's just so I've sort of tightened her up into the Susan that we know now. So okay. that's a long winded answer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's changed. No, that's a, that's a, that's, yeah, that's a great answer, and it's it's good to see that they they do take that back, and you know because obviously when, as you because yeah. you had know, intellectual property something like that and a gaming industry from working in Sony they keep t very very tight lipped on what it is, um, and yep. you know and obviously non disclosures and this left right and center, yeah. so yeah I can imagine it's yeah it's good to see that as you've realised what the Gary character is that they do go back and allow you the opportunity to then embellish on that you know on on what you've learned and bring it back to to the to the earlier role yes, exactly and that's how much they pay such great attention to detail it wouldn't have matched yeah i mean it was the same basic voice and the same basic attitude but she wasn't fully fleshed out susan mm -hmm. fair enough. excellent excellent uh at matthew 1800 what attracted you to the role of miss grimshaw in the first place because obviously yeah you've got to have been attracted to, to go there and then... you know I, I, I'll, I'll tell you this when I saw for, I didn't know anything about video games and when mm -hmm. the call came from my agent I thought oh video game I don't even know what that would be Yeah. Um, but it didn't come from my voiceover agent which was interesting um, and when I got the material um, she was a mother being extremely, uh, she was being cruel to her teenage daughter. And I, mm -hmm. I remember thinking like, wow, this is a really cruel, this is a, a cruel character. And I thought, how fun, <laughs> <laughs> how fun mm -hmm. to get out there and just play with being mean. Yeah. Um, and that and that turned out to be true. I mean, you haven't really played yet, but Susan is she's really hard on the girls, the other women right. in camp. She when she disapproves of what they're doing, she really brings it down on them. She is mean and nasty. And it's so funny because the women in camp are some of my very closest friends now. So <laughs> um we had just a blast playing mm -hmm. like with that line of um, when might Susan actually strike you? How far can you push her? And uh, I was right. That was really fun. Excellent. So I'm so, I'm so glad. <laughs> they do say it's always good to play the bad guy. <laughs> yeah. Yes. 
right? Again, mm-hmm. what a fun thing to get to do as a woman over 35 to get out there and really be a badass. Yeah, exactly, exactly. You know, that's just <laughs> taking us right back to what we want. That's perfect. Yeah, so it's right? not something you get often, not something you do get often, but yeah, that's brilliant to, to have that and have that opportunity to sort of to relish in. in yes. <laughs> Yes, to just feel that cruelty move through you. Yeah, it's really fun. Excellent, excellent. Well, that sadly draws me to the end. I've got one signature question that I know is sad. It's had such fun. Um, I have a signature question, Kylie. I can't okay. remember if I'm asked Keisha this guy. I know that he's listened to Watch One. Uh, it's just a silly question. It's, not, it's just nothing to, to worry about. I had a, I had a okay. guy say that, but then people's faces and they go, <gasps> <laughs> before they thought about laughing. Uh, so about two years ago, I had a guy on, he was in Star Wars and he's worked with Jim Henson for 25 years and someone sent me this question and I just thought it was such a fun question to ask. I thought, I'm going to see everyone's response to it because it's just, it's just hilarity. Uh, well, it is for me anyway. <laughs> if you could have a Muppet created after your own personality and your own character what kind of muppet would it be and why so choosing from existing muppets that or, I know. Yeah, or you can create a new one a totally new one it can be one that you can mix two or three or okay i'm gonna try not to overthink this uh because <laughs> what's popping to mind is big bird okay and I think because Big Bird, <laughs> Big Bird is so sweet <laughs> and is always talking about love and kindness that sort of fixes everything and always sort of wants to um, to teach that, right? Mm-hmm. The sort of Big Bird may be big and awkward, <laughs> but Big Bird knows exactly who Big Bird is yeah. <laughs> um, and wants to sort of give everyone a chance to be who they are. Okay. That's great. It's a little bit of an earnest answer. <laughs> I don't know, maybe I should have come up with something funnier, but that's no, what I've no. got for you. I'm an earnest person, Chris. <laughs> yes, you are. <laughs> and no. I'm very tall, so yeah. big. Yeah. <laughs> now I'm trying to picture you with the big, those yellow, big orange feet and stuff. <laughs> yeah, me too. Me too. Mm-hmm. Can't quite get it out of my head. <laughs> Halloween is really far away too. I know, it is. Yeah, that's a perfect costume. I've got my costume. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Cool. I did have one for. I have a couple of SEAL team guys from that SEAL team show on, and they they they, had, they didn't speak, and oh, they they they're really good friends. And it turned out two of them actually had the same character, uh, Grover, the uh, the trash can guy. Oh, I love Grover. Yeah, both of them said that, and I was just I was. No, wait, no, 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 Grover. That's not Grover. The no, trash can. Grover, super Oscar's Grover, Oscar, the trash Oscar, can guy. Yeah, he is, yes. Yeah, Oscar. you see what happens. Your kids grow up, and you forget. <laughs> it is Grover's the blue one with the little helmet who goes super Grover. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's right. That's Grover. Oscar's in the trash can. That's right. Oscar the trash can. Yeah, both of them were Oscar the trash can. <laughs> and Big Bird teaching kindness and love. He, he does, or she does. <laughs> I don't, it's, he's a boy, right? He is, but obviously Bird. you're... Yeah, Big Bird. I think he's a... I think so. Uh, yeah, I <laughs> think so. I think it's difficult to tell. <laughs> Google. Go, yeah, Google. 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 I don't know. No idea. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, never mind. <laughs> Is there anything you'd like to say before I stop recording to the people who are watching and listening? Ah, uh, I just would say thank you so much. I the unexpected gift of doing this video game of doing Red Dead has has been the fans. I I had I didn't start a Twitter account until the day before the game came out. Uh because I knew that there'd be an opportunity to interact with fans and I thought that sounded like fun. Uh, and I was warned that it might be um, a mixed bag, that mm-hmm. people might have some mean things to say. I have not had one comment that was hurtful or dismissive. It has been such a positive experience. And I feel like, um, and it continues to deepen. Um, I feel like I have real relationships with the fans. Um, and so thank you. I just say thank you to the fans. Lovely. Thank you all for tuning in. I really hope you enjoyed listening or watching to that episode as much as I did making it for you. Again, as I said, please make sure you subscribe to Hellblazer Biz on YouTube at, at Hellblazer Biz on Twitter and Instagram and Hellblazer Biz on Facebook and www.hellblazerbiz.com. Share the word, spread the word. Uh, I need more guests. I need more people like you to send me questions so I can get guests and help me get them on. So thank you very much for tuning in. This has been Chris Gordon on Hellblazer Biz. 
with another fantastic guest lined up for you soon.